trillions could flow through cryptos like Stellar XLM and Zion coins could benefit. Yes, people, you and I could benefit from this, but how am I deriving at that? And how am I coming to that conclusion? Well, first, before all of that, please like, subscribe. It helps us with the YouTube algorithm, and I can keep delivering more and more content like this to you more frequently. Now, with that aside, let me just say this. It's clear, people, it's all about the fundamentals, and this specific fundamental fact is crucial because it's to do with the protection of our secret keys of our digital assets. Yes, protection from quantum computing. And if you haven't known, if you don't know, actually, the Stella.org Twitter account was hacked. It was taken over by some malicious actors. And this is why I feel it's prevalent to make this video today, because we need to think about security. We need to think about protecting ourselves in the future for our financial future. And how are we going to go about doing this? Well, I think we need to do a little bit more research. And I have been digging down into this um, quantum computing and ways that we can protect our secret keys from the onslaught of quantum computing cracking. And really, it's quite prevalent because actually the research that we did previously suggested that IBM might be around the corner from making a 100,000 cubic quantum computer. And that means that it could easily crack the elliptic curve secret keys. And probably many of them at the same time. And really, this is a major problem. So how do we, how can we protect against this hacking and cracking? And if you think about Murphy's Law, this is something that's going to go on for a long time, which means that we're going to have to continually keep up to date, just like firmware, I guess, or, you know, spyware. You're going to have to keep that up to date so that your keys are safe. And we'll probably incorporate this into our Zigfree wallet, highly likely. And this is where we start. We do the research here today to make sure that we're secure. In any case, Nathan, what have you got for us? Over to you. Okay, that's great. Thanks for that, Nathan. Yeah, and you know, actually at the moment, there are commercial um, quantum computers being sold for as little as a hundred million dollars and when you think about that you know anyone really could pick one of these computers up but we'll read on and find out a little bit more about protection against quantum computing cracking to protect the to protect elliptic curve secret keys from potential cracking by quantum computing there are specific cryptographic algorithms designed to provide quantum resistance one such algorithm is called the elliptic curve diffie hellman or ecdh key exchange with a post quantum secure elliptic curve here are a few steps to enhance the security of your elliptic curve secret keys transaction or transition to post quantum cryptography consider transitioning from traditional elliptic curve cryptography to post quantum cryptography algorithms that are designed to resist attacks from quantum computers these algorithms such as lattice based or code based cryptography are based are believed to be resistant to quantum cracking Picking a quantum resistant elliptic curve, evaluate and choose an elliptic curve that is specifically designed to be resistant against quantum cracking. NIST is currently running a standardization process to identify such curves. Increase key sizes, increasing the size of the secret key used in the elliptic curve cryptography alg uh, algorithm. A large key size increases the effect the effort required to crack the key. Experts recommend using key sizes that are resistant to both classical and quantum attacks. Regularly rotate keys. Regularly rotating and updating your secret keys to limit the window of time for a potential quantum attack to occur. This practice ensures enhanced security against any future advancement in quantum computing technology. Any. Any advancement in quantum so rotating your keys how about having more than one key how about having 10 20 30 different keys if you've got value of a certain amount right that's going to vastly reduce you know the um the the the, the effort um for you to protect your keys 
um, because you're holding lower values, of, of, um, um, you know, among number of different keys, right? And that is going to increase the effort required for the quantum computer. So obviously stay informed, keep up to date on the advancements, post cryptography and developments around potential quantum cracking and techniques. This knowledge will allow you to adopt and adopt new security measures as needed. But I think that's the key really is to have many different keys, especially if you've got bigger numbers of value or you can have um, a smart contract essentially that requires maybe, you know, 10, 15 different keys if you really want to keep <clears throat> one account number, but then that's a prime target. So when I say account number, I mean one public key, right? But that's a prime target. So what you could do effectively um, is we looked at set 32 and I'll go over that, you know, um, at, at some point. But what that means is it becomes a little bit centralized at that point because you're you're then keeping these keys on a specific server, but you get to keep um, what you could call a username, if you like, but then your secret keys are rotated consistently, constantly. And what that does is it protects you against, um, is it set 32, set 31 or set 35, something like that. It protects you against this um, quantum computing attack, right? Because you don't have just one set of keys. You've got many different keys, um, but then we lose that decentralization, right? But there may be ways. I read on. Um, so really, we know that, you know, quantum computing um, continues to evolve. So there's a need for robust post-quantum secure crypto cri cryptographic algorithms, but we just keep an eye on it, right? And we, we look at other ways it's possible to um, beat this quantum computer. So how do we know that? Well, we look at the issues. So the issues with quantum computers. At present, quantum computers face several key challenges that limit their widespread usage when compared to traditional computers. Here are some of the main issues. Scalability. Building and maintaining a large-scale error-corrected quantum computer is highly complex. Current quantum computers are prone to errors due to noise and environmental interference. Scaling up these systems while minimizing in errors remains a significant challenge. Scalability of quibits, okay? So quantum bits or quibits. The fundamental building blocks of quantum computers are highly sensitive to noise and external influences. They are they require strict temperature controls and isolation from surroundings to maintain coherence. Achieving st stable qubits with large coherent times is crucial for reliable quantum computing. It can only really be done actually practically, potentially, likely in space in that event. Error correction, quantum error correction is essential to mitigate errors in mitigate errors inherent in quantum systems. However, implementing effective error correction mechanisms is complex and demanding. It typically requires additional qubits and complex algorithms, which further compounds the scalability challenge. Limited gate operation. Quantum computers can perform specific operations called quantum gates. However, the set of gates operations that can be performed on qubits is limited, making it challenging to perform general purpose com computing tasks efficiently. Developing a broad set of universally applicable quantum gates is an ongoing era of research. So it's, it falls down to environment. You know, these vi environmental issues um, are key, really. Noise, intermediate scale quantum or NISQ era, the correct generation of quantum computers known as NISQ computers have limited qubit counts and coherence times. These limitations restrict their ability to solve complex problems effectively. As a result, quantum computers in the NISQ era face particular limitations for broader applications and availability and access. Access to quantum computers is currently limited to a few research institutions and companies. The accessibility and availability for widespread excuse me for widespread 
use are limited due to the specialized infrastructure and resources required. Traditional computers have well-established architectures, decades of optimization and generalized programming language and tools, which have made them more accessible and versatile for various applications. Quantum computers are still in the early stages of development and significant advancements are needed to overcome the current challenges and make them more practical and powerful for broader uses. So all, to, all so altogether, although quantum computers show great promise for solving specific computational problems, they are not yet at a stage where they can outperform traditional computers in most general computing tasks. And that's to do with really, again, scalability and um you know say for example we had a threat of you know um this quantum computer it, theoretically speaking you know that could attack multiple keys at multiple time at the same time right that's just not what a quantum computer can do it could focus on you know a few specific tasks essentially not you know hundreds of thousands of different keys at one time that's not it's not a likely thing any time in the future um, so we know this, but if we needed the protection, if we know that it's coming and it could be because we have this Murphy's law, right, then we need to get up on it and get resistant, right? But in any case, ongoing research and development efforts aim to address the, these challenges to unlock the full potential of quantum computers in the future. So it's clear that it's coming and Murphy's law says so. So we need to get on board because as soon as they start dotting these quantum computers out there in space which they probably have done already um you know i don't doubt that um the jtw telescope is a quantum computer it's highly likely i may be wrong but it might be something i don't want you to know who knows that's me speculating in any case Nathan, back over to you that's great thanks for that Nathan. yeah and so we know this uh d wave or peter shaw's um from the bell lab um, AT&T, that algorithm um, has the potential um, to do the cracking of, 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 of our secret keys, of our elliptic curve secret keys, but we know how to combat that, right? Um, but, I mean, it's still prevalent. We, it's something that we have to keep on top of, okay? 100%. If you're not, then essentially it could happen. The likelihood of it happening is remote, why is it remote? Well, because all the companies that have these quantum computers are sparsely identifiable. And to be quite frank, the amount of value you're likely to have in terms of your cryptos um, isn't going to be anywhere near uh, what a quantum computer is going to use to crack your secret keys especially if um, it's of some unimportance, quite frankly. However, that said, let's just say you had at or near that sort of level of currency, um, then, yeah, you could be at threat from um, quantum computer cracking. But... If you reduce that value, it's likely to be a lot lower, unless you're being targeted one way or another. So in any case, yes, we need to think about protection from quantum computing because we like the idea that our keys are safe and secure um, from anything when it comes to our cryptocurrencies. And they can be. It's all about the algorithm. And, you know, we've been looking at Peter Shaw AT&T, we've been looking at the AT&T stock and it's, um, it's uh, likely to move up, but there may be some corrections on the way. So let's look out for that. In any case, I'm Nathan, AKA Nathan of Zion. Smash the Zion coin up there, like and subscribe and check out the next videos. Check out Banking on Bitcoin Revisited, so important, and obviously our next stellar video, and it's one that YouTube have recommended, so you should watch it. Have a great day now. Take care.